am I going to deal with this attack? Okay. And maneuvering is a lot more than that. Maneuvering is awareness. Okay. Um, how many doors are there that are accessible to the outside of this room? Two. Two. Three. 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 Same question. Oh. Uh, three. Three. Okay. Uh, Okay, how many, how many of you say two? How many of you say three? Okay, there are three. Oh, okay. Oh, we're going to do television. Uh, no. So, maneuvering is, is more than just dealing with a single attacker. Maneuvering is an awareness of your environment. Okay? Uh, if you're aware of what's around you, whether you're inside or outside. And this only takes a moment to do. You know, you, you can find out where you can go to get away from something. Okay. Um, where, you know, um, you, know you, you make sure you've got easy access to the, to the exit. Okay, because that's what, that's what some of this is up here in the way in which it is. Um, because we're going to create some problems. Um, <clears throat> there's a method, there is a method to the madness. There's also awareness is dealing with people in general, okay? Um, and different cultures. You, you have, in this country, there's a, I forget what it's called, uh, a zone that you don't get closer to a person than. There's a proper term for Comfort zone. It. Comfort zone, okay? For most Americans, it's two to three feet, okay? Uh, when you get into Russian community, Iran, community, what? Iran, Iran, it's, it's about 12 to 12 to 16. Years. Yeah, and, and I've had it, you know, having taught high school, I've got kids that are right here, and they're not threatening me. I mean, you kind of get used to it because you have to judge their other body language. But different cultures have different uh, comfort zones, and you need to be aware of them. Okay. Um, because if, if you feel, if your comfort zone is okay, if you feel, you know, secure, you know, your, your, your judgment is probably pretty good. And, and one of the things you have to rely on, on martial, in the martial arts, and uh, uh, really is your own internal sense of, is, am I okay, is the situation okay, or is it something that concerns me? And probably nine times out of 10, that gut feeling Okay, if you're if you're a normal, rational person, nine out of ten times, that gut feeling is probably going to be right. Because all these other processes, these mental processes and emotional and all that other garbage plays into, you know, to make a long story short, how you feel. And if you feel this person is a threat, you don't want to get this close to them. Okay? Or if you've got two or three friends and they're all trying to approach you that close, that's not cool. <laughs> okay. Although that close they all can't do anything to you. Okay, but this also applies. Uh, how many of you have kids? Uh, some of you better not. <laughs> okay, now, um, one thing I learned a long time ago, and, and I, I would do this even with my daughter, because she's a couple of inches taller than I am, okay? Uh, which I think is cool. Um, is that if, if, and this is whether you're at home, whether you're a teacher student submission, a uh, uh, superior you know, person, employees, lower than you are, or just any situation, rather than talking to the person standing up, that they're taller than you are, you have to look up to them. And that has a lot to do with who's feeling superior, who's feeling inferior. Taller people tend to end up in more supervisory jobs. Shorter people tend to be more assertive to comp compensate for their shortness. Okay. Um, but anyway, um, if you get both sides to sit down in chairs opposite each other, it brings the eye level closer. And once you have the eye level closer and both people feel more equal, you tend to you're able to have more reasonable discussion. Okay? And this has this has to do with human behavior. Okay. So anytime you can equalize the eye contact level, even if it's you know the little kid like this, rather than talking down, like, yes, Dad. Uh, if, if, if you can both sit down, 
you're going to have a better discussion because your little munchkin isn't going to feel as threatened. Okay? Or you're not going to feel as threatened by your boss if you're both sitting down. Okay? Now, the question is then, where do you where where is the seating? Okay. <coughs> if you're totally comfortable with your kid, sitting across the kitchen table, what do you have between you? A barrier, yes, not a ta table, yes. You have a barrier, okay? Like your six-year-old is going to attack you, okay? <laughs> but parents like to do this because the little kitchen tables are really a lot of things. And maybe the kid feels secure. Maybe the kid wants to be protected from you. I mean, you never know what's going on between their ears. Um, so in any case, the table is actually a barrier. A desk can be seen as a barrier. Okay. Uh, particularly if, if your supervisor or the boss has these big leather chairs, lets them sit higher than you do. I mean, there are all sorts of strategies that you can use. You know, the chairs around the desk can be shorter than the one he's in. So you know. Anyway, so you bring one of those inflatable pillows. Him, just bear with me. Raise yourself up to his level. Anyway, or girl level. Anyway, but um, that table or desk can be a barrier. Okay, so if, if you're end up sitting on the you know, person behind the desk and you're on the side, that's a more equal position because in essence you have easier access to them. If you're both just sitting in chairs, then, you know, or sofas or whatnot, then you are in a somewhat equal position. Okay, and that's part of your, for success in life and dealing with people, that's part of quote unquote maneuvering. Okay, is you always want to have yourself an advent. As much as possible, you want to have yourself in an advantageous position. Worst case scenario, you want to have yourself in an equal position. Okay. Um, I used to be on the interview team at high school level. Yeah. Okay. And I rarely asked any questions. It would be like a half hour, 40 minute interview. I might ask one question. But I was usually watching the person because I'm pretty good with body language. And they, after this person leaves, they say, well, what was your sense of this person? And I could, you know, by the way they were sitting and behaving, you know, and their body movements, their tone of voice, things of that sort, I could fairly well say, well, you know, yes, no, this person's very apprehensive, you know, these things are going on, and, and that was part of the input in the interview. Okay, so if you ever go to a job interview, one thing you really want to do is, is, is pre-interview, get some French or something like that. Fight for anything, or if you want a pay raise, you, you go through the front, you line up your marbles ahead of time. You say, why, you know, not, well, I don't know, I think you should get a pay raise. Well, I've been here for three years. Uh, you know, you need to have written down for yourself what you've done, what you're capable of doing, what you've done has been exceptional, okay? When you go for a job interview, okay, this is a new break, okay? You need to have you need to have a, a resume. Okay, try and keep it not longer than one page. Because anything longer than one page, people don't read. Even if it's a complaint about it, that's another story. <laughs> anyway, but um, you need to have a good self-image. Okay, you need to project self-respect. If you're comfortable with yourself, and you're confident, and that applies to the street as well. Because if you project an image, if you have an awareness of what's going on. If you're confident they, that other people can sense your calm, even though you may be scared, <laughs> I'm not going to use the other word, um, you have a better chance of surviving. It's an illusion, okay, not necessarily reality. But you, that's part of your maneuvering. You've got all these things that come into play before you even get into a street situation. And it basically comes down to how you handle yourself. Uh, yeah, there are three exits. Okay, to this room. Okay, when you enter a room, you show me, you just take a look around. Or you go into a parking structure, you take a look around. Okay, it's the first thing you do. Find out where things are. Now, the goal, of you, most of you have been in martial arts long enough, you know this, and that is that this situational awareness doesn't create a sense of paranoia on your part. I mean very easily, 
Right. Look at kidnap. Okay. Really? So there are other things. If you're aware of them, you you don't do them. Okay. You don't put you, you don't put yourself in situations where they're you know you go around the other side of your car, if you're, or you go back in and you know get a security guard to come out with you, find one that's brave enough. Uh, <laughs> or you wait, you know, or you simply go have a cup of coffee or do something else, you know. Um, because your, your safety is more important than anything else. Okay, now, uh, we have these buckets here. This one actually has sand in it. That one has dirt. There's one in here that has some water in it, so be careful. Anyway, a couple of that toys are not for you. Okay. Um, why do businesses have counters? What? Counter is a barrier, okay? When you go in to see your friend a dentist, okay? What's there? A counter, okay? Keep you away from that, okay? It's a barrier, and, and businesses use this, and when you go into any business, you can kind of get a sense of how open they are to people, their customers, by how much stuff they have in the room that gets between you and the person you have to deal with, okay? And the same thing occurs on the street. Okay, if you're walking down the street, you need to be aware of what's around you. Now, I would like to have better, have better props, but you go with what you got. Okay, and so what we're going to do here, and these things are here for a purpose. Okay, uh, let me let me borrow Jared because he looks vicious. Okay. If we're not going to do it, there's no techniques here. It's a process. Okay. If if we're talking, you know, and, and he's becoming, all right, I don't trust him really too much. Okay. He, you know, and, and I simply take a step. Okay. Now, what's what's in your way now? There. Okay. Can you get to me as easily? No. Okay. And so you can, whether it be a new stand, fire hydrant. Okay. Um, a trash can, okay. A car, okay. If you're aware of what's around you, you can actually create a barrier. It can be something as simple as several years ago, I was, many years ago, in a uh, local park with my wife, Griffith Park. I went to my car to get something, and two guys came at me, you know, different angles. And so my first, you know, I really can't get away from the van to give myself open space. So I opened the van door, but it was between me and one of the guys. And I said, what do you want? Or may I help you with it? And he says, do you have $5 to change? Now, and then the guys at the other end of the door now. At that point, I simply said, no, I don't. I mean, I didn't want to look at my, get your wallet out, there's your wallet. Well, you know, <laughs> brain dead. Um, so they turned around and walked away. I said, walked away, I said, shit, I like you. <laughs> <laughs> but, sometimes it's how you deal with the situation. If you become the initiator, you have more control, okay? Um, and that's part of the barrier concept, is you, if you're not sure of a situation, you get something between you and the person who you see as a threat. It simply makes it more difficult for them to get to you. It's the same as house burglaries. If someone wants to break in your house, they can break in your house. There's nothing you can do to prevent it, okay? 70-80% of house burglaries are successful because people leave their doors and windows unlocked. Okay? <laughs> if people would lock their doors and windows, you'd have less home burglaries. Uh, so the burglar watch, you go to some places easier. Okay? The, the less you make yourself a target, the more successful you are not being a target. Okay, so what we're gonna do today for a little bit is just to give you the experience so I know you've had the experience, and then we'll get into, we've got all this other stuff off, off the map and deal with the zones of danger, safety zones, and all the other neat stuff. Uh, I need to have 
Uh, okay, we're going to use you three. Okay, you two are going to be standing there. You two? You two. Real simple. And Mark, you're going to be standing here. You, no, 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 you, Mark, uh, you, uh, I don't care. You, you two stand there. You're going to back up a few steps. You're standing here. Okay, now, Marcus Aurelius is walking down the street. He's going to the uh, lion shredding competition in the Coliseum Center. <laughs> okay, and he notices these uh, two thugs. What? Thugs <laughs> in ancient Rome. That, okay, and and he simply wants you simply want to get away from them. Okay, move over to here. Okay, okay. Now you're going to walk to escape them. They're going to try to catch up with you. Okay. That's all I want you to do. And where are you get and where are you gonna go? Okay. Okay, we go. Okay. Wanna go after him? Yeah, you're gonna start going after him. Run, walk or walk. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay, okay. I want you to get away from him. Okay. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> okay, have a seat. Okay, I want another group of three. Let's see what's happening here. Another group of three. One, two, two, another group. Okay, three. Okay, um, we'll put, you're Chris, right? Yeah. Yeah, you're the one they're after. Oh, sweet. Okay, move over to about one step to your right. Two steps. Okay, another step to your right. Okay. Uh, Okay, I don't want physical contact. I want you to get away from it. Go ahead. This is a good Okay, now okay. sit down. <laughs> have you three noticed anything yet? Uh, yeah, I have. What? <laughs> yeah. Okay. What, what, what have you noticed? They didn't really make any effort to get away. He didn't really make, okay, no. that's, okay. Didn't we already say that there are three exits in this room? That's right. Why didn't you go straight the to door. the door? <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 Now, I'm not really trying to pick on you two. This is normal. People don't think, yes? I was just going to say that what Chris did was interesting. He didn't feel like, you guys do this too, but you don't feel like you have to keep going the same direction. Right. You can cut that. He walked around, you know, and made a little of an obstacle. Now, for you two that were trying to chase Chris, did the obstacles make it more difficult to get to him? Yeah. I mean, I know you could have stepped over him. I would have liked to have stuff about this guy. Right. Sure. Yeah. Okay. But, why didn't you close the door? I wasn't even thinking about it. Okay. <laughs> Mark, I think you know that's part of the rule. What did I say? What did not I say? What, not, what did not I say? You didn't, didn't say you had to stay in the room. Um, okay. How many agents were in the, in the room? You asked that before everything else. Okay, first aid a long time ago. If, if you watch, what's this guy that does the mind stuff on TV? David Lane. Right. Right. I need to find what channel is on and what time. The wife is absolutely frantic trying to find this guy. It's on sci-fi. Or so 66? Well, I don't know what it is. It's yeah. just it's a sci-fi. Okay. So it's a, okay, 66. Okay, anyway. Um, and, and part of his process is he'll say something, and then he goes off to something else, and you've forgotten what he said at first, which is what's really important. There are three exits to this room. Okay? Okay, we sometimes do not look around and, and you know, that doesn't stay in our brain, okay? So, what I'd like you to do, okay? Now, there's also a, a way to exit, but I'm not gonna tell you. I wanna see if, if uh, um, any of you can figure this out on your own, because if there is a way to exit, okay? Not just exit, okay? So, um, we want, uh, well, let's take, uh, uh, two more teams. What did you 
Okay, you walk from here to there. Okay. Was it a straight line? <coughs> no, what was it? Wait, well, okay, once you, once you got me on these obstacles, did you walk a straight line to the door? Okay, what did you do? Did you go straight? Did you go straight to the door? Yeah, a little bit of a I had to curve a little bit. You had to curve a little bit. Okay, now, um, and part of this has to do with what we'll get to when we get to maneuvering with with your your safety zone. Is you essentially took a right angle escape? You escaped on the diagonal. Okay, and that is harder for people to change direction for because. Step by step, it's it, you're getting yourself further away from them than if you were simply to go straight. Okay, so had you gone like you're going to go up the, the door, which is to your right. Okay, which you could close, but and if, and if it locked, you'd be safe. Uh, <laughs> okay, or you could turn the right. Okay, and simply by making. A sharp right out of an exit. And if you're walking down the sidewalk and people are following you, someone's and, you, and you're not you're not sure about who's following you. Okay, it's uh, Andy Gump in France. For those of you who know Andy Gump is, um, um, and instead of just walking down the street trying to get away, if you take a sharp right or left turn into a store or a bar or anything else, you're in a much safer situation. And also by making that right turn. That makes it more difficult for them to. It's, it's a slight difference, okay? But it makes it a little more difficult and creates a little more time for you to get away from them. And once you get in that store, man, or even if it's a bar, okay, or a gas station, or a church, it's amazing what stuff is in there that you can keep in between you and someone who's coming after you. And all you're doing is creating. What are you creating for? Your barriers, obstacles, problems, and people who are, who are out to you know rob and molest people don't want to have this stuff. And they're going to go look for an easy target. You're too hard to get. Okay, okay so have a seat. Discussion. But at some point, I want you to just step behind the barrier and you, number one, see how the discussion changes. Okay, you can keep a barrier between. You, okay. We have you, I think four groups. Other than Peter who was hopping around. <laughs> It's uh, basketball. Okay. Um, which is really, I mean, you, you might attract attention that way, but not the kind of attention you're trying to get. Um, anything else from those people that were watching? Did you notice anything in common among the people that were on that? Among the people that were being the accusatory people? What did you notice in common? Everybody was wearing a V. Everyone was wearing a V. Good. Okay. <laughs> we all work at Disneyland. We got to look right. Okay. <laughs> Anything else? Well, I mean, the speed just kept increasing. Okay, the speed kept increasing. Okay, good. The more of the person trying to get closer to them, just yell or whatever out of them, what they tried to do, more the very good. Okay, good point. Yes. Yeah. Actually, I was out in the restroom, but the volume kept. Up. Okay, volume kept increasing. And the gesture. Okay, what about the gesture? And it's like this getting How many of you guys, when you got closer, started pointing? Yeah. Okay, that's a natural thing. You're really sweet. Okay, the death touch. About the chicken, chicken attack. Anyway, um, yeah, there's a pointing. And point, when you start pointing at a person, that's a signal that. This other person is very well upset with you, okay? And you need to step back and create some distance, okay? Create a barrier, okay? Uh, there's something that Peter did. 
which no one else did, other than the hopping around, which I don't encourage you to do, because that gets, gets exhausting after half an hour. Um, anyone notice what he did? Has to do with hand movement. This this is why you kind of you need to keep kind of a general peripheral view of the person. Because the, hand, the, the body language is so important in, in protecting yourself in, in any situation. What did Peter do? Anyone notice what he did? Yes. I, I didn't see him, but did he fold his hands? No, hand? that's bad. Holding your hands means I'm upset with you. I, I don't like what you did. Okay, you're in deep you do. <laughs> the only thing worse than this, this person has their hands on their side and they make it start to make a fist. Because that mean that's worse than this. <laughs> this means I'm I'm ready to hit you. Okay. But something physical is going to happen. They're tensing up their body. Okay. What did Peter do? Anyone pick up on? Which is really important to be paid to do. His hands were like this. What does this usually mean when you do this to stop? Them? Stop or not no. try not try to uh, you know, you're trying to put yourself in a somewhat submiss submissive position of, you know, I don't want any trouble. I don't want any trouble. Can we talk about this? You know, this and this is kind of an accepted. You have to be careful in foreign countries and different culture cultures. Different hand movements mean different things. Um, so whenever you travel to another country, you need to look, read up on hand movements and body language. Uh, so you don't want to do this in Italy? That's <laughs> Australia. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that's Australia. Right, yeah, all right. Yeah, she's in England. Yeah, usually it's individual fingers. Yeah, not individual so much, fingers, not, not so much the body language. Yeah, you have, to, you have to be careful because you can do something in real trouble. Um, you can always tell an American in Europe, too, because they're wearing white shoes. But anyway, um, <laughs> yeah, we generally American, Americans tend to wear white shoes more than people in Europe. Anyway, um, this white shoe show dirt more. Okay. Anyway, but yeah, your hand language is incredibly important. That's part of your body language, and that's part of being aware of the situation and trying to anticipate what might happen. Okay, if a person running this year, they usually means they really know they really don't want to have a hassle with you. You know, doesn't mean you're going to solve the problem, but they don't want to have a hassle with you. Okay. And it's a good thing you can even do this in a ready position. Okay? Little do they know. Um, but this is really important. It, it may bring the situation, it may go over the situation. If you can talk to them in a calm voice, now this can have two effects. If a person's really getting more excited and you talk to them, continue to talk to them in a calm voice, some people will actually get them more upset. Okay? But then you have to realize who has control here. The person who's getting madder and madder, or you who's remaining calmer. Okay, and you have to remain calm. Okay. <laughs> so you know, your voice tone levels. Okay. Uh, other thing, one other thing that we're going to get going on the mat here is, is what you're saying. Okay. And this has to do with it, this, and this has to do with how you interact with people. Um, if a person calls you an idiot, or they call you a piece of whatever, you know, make some sort of racial or ethnic or religious slur towards you, what happens if you come back with the same type of comment? Now, whether or not you agree with what they said, most of the time you would not agree. It tends to escalate. It tends to escalate the situation. Okay. So if you can, in any time you're having an argument with anyone, Relative, employee, uh, customer, you stick with the issue. You don't get into uh, uh, personalities. You don't get into any of this stuff where they can take, a person can take personal insult and use that to justify them getting more upset. Okay? You stick with the issue. Why are you upset with me? What did I do wrong? Okay. Ask them questions. Anything that involves them in talking and explaining themselves 
will usually lower the level of escalation because they feel someone is listening to them. Okay? And what you need to do is lower that level of escalation to make so that you feel more safe. More safe? So that you feel safer. Okay? And, and, any, and that's hard to do when you're in an argument. But even if it's you know, with a close friend, if you stick to the issue and you don't say, well, you know, don't be stupid, agree with me. <laughs> you, know, you don't say that because now you call them stupid, okay? <laughs> and now they have a right to be more upset with you, okay? So you, you, you keep the adjectives, the descriptive terms out of it, okay? You try and be as objective as possible. It may drive some people absolutely crazy. They don't like that because they want to be able to justify that they're assault upon you. Okay? But many people, if it's a legitimate argument and it's a legitimate difference, if you stick with the issue rather than getting the personalities, you're not going to have a physical confrontation. And you both may work, walk away without the problem resolved, but at least you'll understand where each person is. Okay, yes? I saw an interesting example of someone who very consciously lowered the volume of the voice. Yes. When people were having difficulty hearing, and it actually wrapped something down yeah. because they were, couldn't hear. Teachers will do that. Huh? You clever kids. I can't do that. <laughs> My kids know that as long as I'm loud, they're safe. They, they, <laughs> they learned this from me. Real soon. They learned that when I, be, when I go sit down and I'm totally quiet, that something bad is going to happen to someone. Okay. And that's just part of my personality. But they know as long as I'm talking loud, etc., it's okay. Okay, you get to know people's personalities and how to respond to. Them. But generally, yeah, if you lower your voice, people will actually try to listen more. Okay, and they'll come down. And yeah, you can talk more quietly. People will listen to you. And I can't talk this way more. Because I think I sound like an idiot. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> so. So yeah, you can, you can try things with people, um, but what you're trying to do essentially is de-escalate the situation, okay? And anything, anything that does that increases your sense of safety, okay? And um, reduces the chance that you're gonna have to use self-defense or jiu-jitsu. Okay. Yeah, these, if you're walking down the street, you're not sure of the neighborhood, you don't walk next to the buildings, you don't walk next to the car, you stay in the middle. Give yourself a little space. If you're walking down the street, you're not sure of the neighborhood, you walk with oncoming traffic to your right. Our cars are to your right. That way you can look in the car. No. Yeah, you can oncoming traffic. Yeah, that way you can look into the cars before you approach. It's just easier to see in the front. Because many vehicles, the side and back windows are... Okay, front windows in most states is not legal to tint the windshield. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, so you, you, that's part of it. Okay, it's just an awareness. If you see a group of people, you know, that you think are not going to hold you in too high regard, okay, think they might be out to rob you or something like that. Profile. What? Profile. Your profile, yeah. You, 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 no, you do pro everybody profiles. Okay? Everybody profiles. You, you can't you can't say people don't. Everybody profiles. Um, but if you send this this person or, or two or three people pose a threat to you, um, you can either turn around and walk the other way, which is not necessarily the smartest thing to do. Or you look to just you know a party situation awareness where businesses that are open and take a side step into the business and let them walk by, okay, they go back out. I mean, if you feel that that, that you know this person or two people pose that are going to pose that great of a threat to you, then you you get out of the way and turning around and walking in the other direction or crossing the street. Crossing the street is that is better than turning around and walking the other way. Of course, I get a ticket for jaywalking. But anyway, um, that's better than getting mugged. Um, the more you keep yourself in the center of a situation, you know, or, or 
or, or the more room you have around you, the safer you're going to be. So, what we need to do now, we bark Steve as he volunteer, is we're now going to start dealing with, okay, I've got this one attack, this one person here, I'm not exactly sure, okay? And um, we're going to have you get up and, and, and practice this at some point. Okay, there are, generally you have what are called zones of safety or danger or zones of indifference or whatever, you, everybody's got a different you know, set. Um, Mark works from six, five, five zones? Five ranges of combat. Five, five ranges of combat, I work three, I've seen other people with high six, some down to four, uh, some one, you know, so it, it's, it really depends and, and I don't really care how you number it or whatnot, but there are certain ranges in which you have, the, the threat level goes up and down. Okay, if Steve is there, and I'm clear over here, okay, I can basically, you know, and there's not much he can do about it, except come towards me, okay. I, I'm really, I'm in a, in a relatively, relatively fairly safe zone, plus I got a door here, okay. So, so he, I see him coming at me, I can just go out the door. Okay. At six feet, this is about six feet, okay. Um, and, and again, it's very hard, in, in our society, it's very hard to keep people at six feet. Okay. Law enforcement. And, and I cringe, because I've seen officers, they're up this close. And I say, what are you waiting for? I mean, what, are you expecting me to hit or something you know, or assault? Okay, and, and so they'll go back to about a four foot, you know, three to four foot range, okay? Because they, part of their thing is they're trying to intimidate. I mean, it's not, in, um, it might be intentional, it might not be, but the closer I, if I'm an officer, the closer I am to you, the more, the greater intimidation effect I have upon you, okay? But for the officer, the closer he gets, the more danger he's in. And it applies to anyone. So, <coughs> six feet is, six feet out is a reasonably safe zone, okay? If he wanted to swing at me without taking a step, okay. I have to watch him do kata all day. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. That's cool. Who just, why did they start to do this? Where'd you, what is, what art is that? Where'd you go to, you know, where'd you learn that? That's cool. And, and it's, it's sometimes that'll work. You, you, you're trying to diffuse the situation. You don't say, don't stop showing that stupid shit. You know? <laughs> 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 that may be what you're thinking, but don't say it. And they don't, <laughs> what, <laughs> you, tr you know, you're trying to, you know, distract them. Okay. If you can maintain this distance, okay, with six six feet, you're safe, okay. Mainly because if he wants to do anything, he has to take how many steps to make contact with me? How many steps does he have to take? At least two, 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 two steps, okay. And if if he takes a step, I can take a step. I, so I, I can see him coming, okay. And it's very easy for me to maintain that six foot distance, okay. If he takes if he takes a step again, and I want to go diagonal, okay, he's got to change position too. So if you can move on the diagonal, that's even better than going straight back from his line, his you know his uh, z axis. Okay, if I can move over this way or this way, okay, he has to turn that. Okay, okay. So we've got six feet is ideal. Okay, he can't do anything to you. Okay. Uh, that's about six feet. Okay, take a step. Step and just stand there. Both feet together. Swing at me. Okay. Okay. Still can't do anything. But this is not a, you know, for me, this is not a safe zone anymore. This is a, a threat zone. Okay. So from about three to six feet, this is a threat zone. Okay. 
because all he has to do is take one step. one step, and now he can do some damage to me. Okay. So this three, this three, three foot, you know, three or four feet, depending on how tall a person is, um, and uh, how long their legs are. Okay. Really guides this three to six foot zone. Okay. Okay. Now. If he takes another step towards me, okay, now we are about 18 inches, two feet apart, okay. This is, if he is a karate person, this is his prime zone, 18 inches to 24 feet. 24 inches, excuse me. <laughs> 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 oh. Jumpy, jumpy, <laughs> okay. This is This is his ideal zone. 18 to 20 or 18 to 30 inches. That's where his hits can be most effective. That's where his uh, kicks can be most effective. Okay. This is not a zone I want to be in. This is where I can get hit. This is where I can get cut. This is where I can get all sorts of physical things can happen to me. Okay. I don't want to be. This is. <coughs> this this is. You got threat zone. This is. The D word, the danger zone. Okay, this is where I'm going to get it. Okay, if we get to here and I can move into here, okay, which is zero to 18 inches. Okay, this is a better zone for me as a jiu-jitsu person or as a judo person. Okay, this is where I want to be. If I can't be this close, I want to be a good three feet away. This area in here is not safe for me. Okay, I want to be either in close. Where I get him with elbows, do techniques on him, what have you. Okay, or I want to stay out of his range. Okay, and this doesn't take into account you know the flying snap kicks and the taking the step and doing whatever he's going to do. You know, uh, doesn't include any of that. So, for example, if I'm three feet away and he come, wants to come in with a roundhouse and I don't move, guess who's going to get it? Okay, so I have to have a perception of his entire body. Okay, so I if, if I see him coming in for a roundhouse, I can. See Step back, go down, go sideways, go whatever direction I want. If I don't want, if I don't want to make contact with him, okay. If I want to block him, he wants to. Now I have to move in, okay. Now I have to. So I have to make a choice here: either back or in, okay. So this this zone this zone is where you know, 18 inches to three feet or four feet is where it is really. A, a high threat zone. Okay, once you get into zero, okay, this is where we're into throws. And if we get down to, to the ground, if you, some people go that far, but they, okay, now we're both on the ground, they put that as a light threatening zone. Okay, for law enforcement, down on the ground is light threatening. Okay, and that's where even though LAPD doesn't usually allow the use of crowded restraint, you get a suspect goes down to the ground with you, it's okay to use. It's okay to use deadly force once you're on the ground. Okay, because that's life threatening. And no one's gonna argue. Okay. So and that that ground is really the worst place to be. Okay, so you can have, like I said, Mark has five, I work with three, I've seen as high as six or seven. Okay. What 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 is important that you realize is that there are zones or ranges, whatever you want to call it, within which you're safe for jiu-jitsu people. You know, I kind of sometimes refer to it as the ring of death, 18 inches to three feet, <laughs> or ring of danger, because that's where you're really in danger. Because once you get this close to a karate person, unless they're really good with their knees or elbows, they're useless. Because they can't hit you this close. They can't kick you this close. There, there, there's no power. Okay. So th this is the range that's dangerous for, for us. Whereas in close and out a little further is safe for us, safer for us. Okay. Uh, so what we're going to have you to do, okay, what I want you to do is I'm not going to have you step back. Okay. This I, I want you to try and combine both of these. And the second one. It doesn't have, you know, I'm using a lot of momentum for this. 
This one, if it's lined up, is going to be mostly here or here. It's just, it's just a slap. You don't need a lot of force behind it. It's the distraction value. And if you're going to ideally do them both at identically the same time, this will really mess the person up. And when you have this done to you, no gentlemen are wearing cups here or any gentlemen wearing cups. Okay, so we're going to leave the crotch, the, the lower strike out because we don't want anyone bending over and singing high, high, high tone sounds. Songs. Anyway, <laughs> okay, so what we're going to have you do, you're just going to come in here, and you, you can slap to the side, you can slap to the front, the sternum, okay, you can slap to the stomach, okay, don't go for the face. It's too small of a target. Throat, eh, it's, it, again, it's a small, it's hard to get your hand in there. There's a nice big torso here, use it, okay. But I want that aggressive block. I want you to use your body rather than your your forearm, which is all some of you are using. It's not going to stay. You can, if 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 Steve or or Jared really does a full swing at you, and you do this, this will go like this. <laughs> okay, and you'll go the other way. Okay, because you go this way, you know. He's gone beyond the perpendicular. Your body now has to react somehow. Okay, and it's going to go. So that's why you block aggressively. Because you don't, usually you don't have little wusses attacking you. Okay. <laughs> However, if you've got two or three people, you know, a couple of people that are going to attack you, watch out for the little guy. You have to watch out for them. Because they're the ones that will sneak around behind you. They're, they're, they're usually faster. Okay. Smaller people usually move faster, okay? And it's harder to deal with them because they're smaller, thinner, what have you. So if you've got a two or three people that you know you're concerned about your safety with, you really need to keep more of an eye on the, on the little guy. Because he's the, you know, the big guy knows he can take care of himself. Okay? It's the little guy that's gonna be kind of like a chihuahua, you know. Nipping your heels or something like that, maybe. <laughs> okay, so Enough of La Boca, let's get out here. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not going to do it really for real too much because most people really hate it. Once is about the most. Okay, I, I'm going to, when you, if we, if we do this on Sunday, if I remember it, um, you'll probably only do this once to each other. Some of these techniques, uh, some of you won't want to do at all. Some of you'll do once because you really know, need to know how it feels. That's part of learning in, in Jiu Jitsu. Okay, so I'm going to have you over here. This one. He's going to come in with his head. Okay. Oh, he put his hand in here. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, 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 yeah. What you're going to do is grab some skin, oh. okay? And all you do with the skin is you turn sideways. If you turn down, he will go up, and he will pretend he's an angel, <laughs> okay? But if you just grab, this is hard to do with a gi. If you just grab a little, <laughs> you're doing a good job, sir. <laughs> grab, grab, grab some skin, take the muscle out. Okay. Okay. And then turn. See what happens? Okay. And it really will stop a person. Really, it doesn't work when you do it to yourself. Okay. <laughs> okay. It, it really will stop a person cold. But that's what you need to come into that slap, then grab some skin and turn. Okay. Don't try and turn it this way. If you try and turn it this way, he'll actually go down a little bit. But it's, you don't get as good a grab, and you, you lose it going towards you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, okay, no, we just wanted to get the blood circulating. Oh. Okay, so, uh, we're going to take a break. If, if you get to the side, you're going to get that love handle, and they will have a whole new definition for the word love. <laughs> the next time their spouse grabs them there, they are going to go through the ceiling before anything happens. <laughs> and then your spouse is going to say, 
why do you have this problem? Anyway, so <laughs> what I want you to do is, is you want your block and hit at the same time, grab a bit of skin, and all you need is a little, okay, and then you're going to turn it. And you will see this person go up, okay? And that will be the only time, they won't want you to do this a second time today, okay? So you only, this is, you only get one try, okay? You can, if you, you actually do this for, for, I use this more for sitting down, a sitting down technique, like the guy's trying to pick up on a girl in a movie, and he's trying to get for, a little fresh with her, and what, what she can do to get, you know, lean him on, and oh, sitting down. And you can actually come into the inside of the groin, same thing, little horse bike there, you know, this grab hold, guy's in the head, this is cool. Yes, it sure is. <laughs> okay. Uh, for your hand up side of the it's so nice. You know, this girl's really coming on to me. And you just dig in, right on the side of the neck, and straighten out. Okay, makes a real impression. The one that really hurts is coming in, in here and doing it. Okay. That'll hurt you the most. Okay. So what I what I what you you know, one of the things you need to realize in jiu-jitsu is that like, if we show one thing, that doesn't mean it's the only thing that you have for, okay? So, you can use the neck, under the arm, side of the torso. And these are areas that are sensitive to touch, okay? Any place that's sensitive to touch, the little horse likes, okay? Just let them nibble. Okay, so, <laughs> okay, now, uh, we've been dealing, in terms of maneuvering, is in, in basically staying on the inside, okay? Uh, there are advantages to being on the inside, okay? There are a lot more areas on the inside. Okay. There are a lot more areas here that can be attacked, okay? You can do more damage, okay? Uh, getting a person from behind is not considered clean. It's not considered ethical. It's considered dirty partying. But then again, this person attacked you and they shouldn't have touched you in the first place, okay? And you have to realize that when you're defending yourself, ethics is a nice thing to talk about. And that's about it, okay? Um, street situation has nothing to do about clean fighting or dirty fighting or what have you, it's who wins, okay? And that's your, you know, who survives, and that's your concern, okay? You can deal with the ethics of it later or the morality of it later. But what you have to realize is this person violated all the ethics in the book and all the morality in the book by physically attacking you. <clears throat> this is the person that screwed up and did the big no-no. Okay? All you're doing is helping him continue his way to wherever he's going. Okay? You, 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 if you get in the martial arts and you're serious about it, and you're serious about defending yourself, you have to take a different mental perception of what the attacker is and your role in this whole thing, okay? You are not at fault. If you happen to cause some serious damage to this person, yes, you're going to feel bad. And that's a given. You hurt, no one likes to hurt another person. That's a given, okay? And we do our best not to. But, <coughs> your life or their life, it's gonna be their life. Put it another way, it's better to be tried by 12 of your peers than carried by six of your relatives. Okay? <laughs> you know, and, and I would much rather, you know, do that. Okay. So we're, we want, now what we want to do is rather than dealing with the inside of doing something, we want to get around this person. Getting around a person is a little more difficult. Okay? Why is it more difficult? Because you have to go, you have to go out and come around. Okay? You can't go straight anymore. Okay? So it's almost a two-step process. Okay, that's that's the downside. It's you know it takes a little longer to get around someone outside of someone. So anything you can do to make this easier helps. That's why you have to have your aggressive blocking. Okay, because if he comes in with a hit, okay, come to me. Okay, and, and I just block this out here. Okay, you know. Okay, if on the other hand he comes in. And I block him further, and I can take a step in further to where I can get his back to me, you know, and I'm now behind him. I'm in a much better situation now, okay? 
That's why you have to be aggressive, because it puts you in a position where you're safer. Okay. Once I'm behind him, I can hit him, I can go into throws, I can take him down, okay, grab his hair, pull his head back, strike him, do a key turn, all sorts of things that you can do from the front, a lot of them you can do from the back. Okay, you can do a hip turn. You can come in, you can do a hip throw, tight toes, okay. So sorry, up nice and high. If you do this up nice and high, it really is neat because he lands on his shoulders and his head. Um, but you know, you, you really need to get this person beyond you so that you're in line. Okay. In essence, I'm, I'm behind him, but I'm beside him. Okay. Because if I block, moving him aggressively, by moving him aggressively, I put myself right behind him, even though I'm. You understand what I'm saying? I'm beside him. Okay, I am beside him. Okay, come in. Good knee up the crotch does wonders. Okay, you will have a medium knee to the bathroom. That really does end the fight fast, trust me. If a person is having problems with incontinence, <laughs> or induced incontinence, well, that's a polite way of putting it, um, they're not going to worry about you. They have something else. <laughs> okay. So, so, but I want what I want you to do is get behind this person. And, and in jujitsu, getting behind, just stay there. Getting behind the person does not mean getting behind them. Okay, it means getting their back in line with your front. Our x axes, I mean our z axes, are parallel. Our y axes are parallel or x-axis are parallel. This is getting behind the person. Okay? So I'm behind this torso. Okay, so that's what I want you to work on. It's just deflecting them enough and taking a big, and, and I'm just, when I'm stepping, okay, if you watch how I'm moving, I'm not, I'm not going straight. I'm going to somewhat around, a little bit around and behind them. Okay? This is almost where I want to be. Okay? I think deflected, he's about 45 degrees. If I deflect him, then I get then I completely behind him. Okay? And this is ideally where I want him, because he can't do anything to me here. <coughs> and he can actually be a lot gentler to a person from behind, and they know they're in trouble. <laughs> okay? And I just block here, okay? What I end up with, okay, from here, and I block. What were we doing? That's it. Is that what we're doing? Yeah. Okay. And, and you're blocking opposite, okay? That's okay. But you're still going this. What this does, if you just block with this hand, it leaves you in a position out here, okay? And I'm, I can't get to where I want to, okay? What you have to do, okay? You get behind him. This allows this impact allows you to move as well. Okay, if he comes in here, even if I do this two hands, okay, by the fact that I'm hitting below his shoulder and knocking him across, okay, this brings turns his body and brings his back to me and allows me to take a bigger step. Okay, so whether you want to do this, okay, or you want to do this one handed is up to you. I don't care. Okay? You've got to have this left hand that's coming fairly high up. It's going to knock his, because you're here to throw, knock his body so that you're behind him. Okay? And you haven't done anything to him yet. Okay? But you want, you've got to get yourself behind him. Okay? And require, if you have some, for this hit over here, you're fine. So you still have to get the hand, because that hit, that claw, that deflection is what gets his back to you, and that's what you want. Okay, so I want you to try this again. Make sure that whichever hand is on the side of the hit is the hand that hits on the upper arm and, and fairly hot, not down here at the elbow. Because down here at the elbow, he has more movement in his arm. Okay, he has more flex, he has more give here. Okay, you hit him here, this arm, if you hit him up here, it's going to move the shoulder, and that's what you want to move is the shoulder. Okay? Let's try it. You're going to come in here and say, now, real easy. I don't want to work too hard. I've got him here. 
Easy one, two, down. Okay, then you can step back and you go. Okay? Now, you can do this with the hand. Come in here. You can hear it. You can fall back. Or if you don't want to do that, you can down without the hand. It really depends on his body position. If, he, if this leg is bent, all you have to do is give a little nudge. Okay? This is not done with your toes. That's a great way to break great toes. Okay? This little glove tap right on the top part of the calf. You don't even need to get in the knee joint itself. This little glove tap. Okay? <laughs> and he's going to get sore in He's going to swing in But if you get behind this person, if you get behind this person, okay, that's what you need. And you're back. Okay? And you really haven't left much, much of a mark on him. And he probably doesn't even know why he went down. Okay? So when he goes to court, he can say, I fell down. Or something, you know. He's not going to remember what you did to him. He's frustrated that you got behind him, which was a distraction. Okay, so we're going to have to do this where you can get about five or six teams up at a time. <laughs> And, and, and sometimes it helps to have a confused look because people, you know, it doesn't matter whether you really are or not. What happened to uh, some of your, let me turn sideways here. Some of your, because the question is going, which, how do I kick, okay? Do I kick downward, okay? Do I kick, try and kick straight across? Which, which really is physically very difficult to do since this is a, how much like it, a pendulum. And what you want is that pendulum, okay? You want to be going slightly up. So when I come in here, I'm not going down. I'm not pushing down because if he goes down real fast and I decide to push, my foot's going to get caught in there. That's not cool for me. So you just this is just an arc. It's a slight upward arc. It's a natural movement of your foot. Okay? You've got to keep it natural. Okay? Very good. Am I looking at you right now? No. What am I looking at? Okay, I'm looking past him and through him. Okay. When you confront a person, if you're confronting a person, uh, your eye language is tremendously important. Okay? If you're trying to intimidate a person, and if you can stare, people don't like to be stared at. For some cultures, it is really rude to make this real eye, eye contact. Okay? I've had some students do it for me, it's just part of it, they do it, and, and until you get used to it, it can be very unnerving because they're really intently staring at you and then eye contact, you know, eye contact does tend to make people nervous, okay? So if, if you want to intimidate a person so that you can maintain this eye to eye contact, okay? In a street situation, okay, it's good. It's better than looking around, you know, and, you know. Because uh, all of this means if you didn't make yourself aware of your surroundings in the first place, Okay, um, but straight eye-to-eye -eye contact is good, okay? Sometimes this can intimidate. Something by just having a conversation with the person while you're staring at them eye-to-eye -eye can make them feel a little insecure, which is why you're doing it, okay? Yes, there's a way of saying, well, dear, if you really love me, we could have this conversation, and we could really be looking at each other in the eyes and having an honest conversation, okay? <coughs> That's a bunch of bull. But, because just because you're looking at a person in the eye doesn't mean you're being honest with them. Okay? <laughs> okay. Yes, Dad, I won't drink before I drive anymore. <laughs> okay. Dad, I won't go out with this guy anymore. <laughs> you have, um, as far as your ability to identify this person in a lineup, it's amazing how lousy eyewitnesses are. Okay? Um, and if, if, if I say he, he's the mugger and he is a good attorney, uh, it's a better 50-50 chance his attorney can prove that he wasn't the person and, and because of my witnessing ability, okay? So, uh, I being a person, you know, say, well, I, can, I remember who he was, or I, you know, yeah, cool, that's nice, but that really, your, your best evidence is, is, is you know, if you've got your hands on him or if he got his hands on you and there is, is the stuff that can be traced physically, then obviously this person had contact with you, but ideally you don't want that situation. But anyway, 
rather than looking at what happens if you look directly at a person into his eyes, is you are cutting up, you are concentrating on their eyes, which is nice. You remember their eye color unless they're wearing sunglasses. Okay, or or contact lenses that change and they have you know cat slits or it says, you know, I bomb or whatever they <laughs> Whatever the uh, contact lenses say on them this week. You can get all sorts of messages on it, you know, and stuff like this. Really neat. Um, the things kids can do nowadays when they have money to spend. Anyway, so, um, but what it does, because you're concentrating on this, if you maintain eye to eye contact, it really cuts down your ability to defend yourself because you are not paying attention to the rest of his body. Okay. And the most important part of his body to pay attention to are his shoulders. shoulders. Okay. Person's shoulders will usually tell you what's going to happen. Usually. Not always. You get a really good martial artist, they may be able to hide it. Okay. But usually if you see a shoulder moving, you know something's coming from that arm or that leg. Okay. That's your best evidence that something is going to happen. Is what's going on in your shoulders. Okay. What I usually try and do is I will usually I'll, I'll try and I'll try and do the Willy what's his last name? Bong. 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 I'll try and do the Willy Wong or the WW <laughs> okay. okay. And I'm basically looking I'm I'm kinda like zoning out my vision. I'm not really concentrating on his face. I'm just looking at him, but I, because I'm not focusing, it expands my peripheral vision. Okay. Your peripheral vision is what's going to save you on the street because it'll pick up motions. If you keep yourself from focusing in this narrow range, you've got problem. I've got to about here without moving my head. Okay, and I can pick up motion that far back. If I'm concentrating on his face, I can't see that. Okay, so you don't want to stare at them. If if you want, I'll sometimes I'll like if, if I'm not concentrating, it looks like I'm looking through the person. And that can be even more intimidating, okay? Because then they're wondering, what are you looking at? Okay, like you said, I was looking behind you, and that's what you want to create in this person. This is part of your maneuvering strategy. It disorients the other person. It gives you a wider view, and you can see what's happening, okay? Because your eyes are your best weapon, best defensive weapon, okay? Um, If you're wearing sunglasses, you're in better shape. Yeah, that's why that's why police officers wear sunglasses. Uh, Safety glasses. Wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute. Okay. <laughs> this is just a question. This is just a question. Okay. Um, okay. Here. Weapons defense techniques. Okay. When you decide you must engage uh, the attack, or deciding whether you must engage the attacker or or not. Okay, he comes up, he pulls out a gun, it's right here. Okay, this point, what do we do? Run, run, run. run. Okay, we're out of there. I don't need safety classes for that. Okay, so you understand that, uh, that part about it. Okay, so we practice that at the beginning of class. All right, all right, and where do you run? The same way you came. The same way you came in. Okay, he was going to wear the safety glasses. Okay, so situations where you're not able to run. Okay, this situation, we're just going to assume that we were at the ATM and your money out. Okay, not yet. I ain't got the money out. Okay. <laughs> 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 money out. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me get the money out. All right. All right. Just actually, protect me. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now, I'm just using I'm just using this analogy because we want it easy easy to relate to. Okay. You go into to an ATM. A lot of them are in these little alcoves. Okay. And you and there's an ATM. There's a little wall over here for for privacy or whatever. I don't know what it is. Okay. Um, but. You're kind, of, you're kind of surrounded, and I get my money, and I turn around, and all of a sudden, there's this guy puts this gun right here, right in my chest. Okay, I can't, I can't go back. It's ATM. There's a wall right here. There's a wall right here. My only exit is, is he came in the same way I did. Okay, what am I gonna do? 
Okay? All right. Now, we've already said this. Grab this weapon or, or anything like that. Okay? Um, so gonna, what do you want? Yeah. The, the first thing is move a little bit so the camera and the ATM can see. Yes, yeah, so make sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so okay. First, first thing you, you got to do is what, whatever, whatever you want, whatever you want, I'll give it to you. Just, just don't shoot. Okay, and then what's he gonna say? Your money. Okay. All right. Then what do you do? Whatever you want. Whatever you want. Your money. Yeah. Whatever you want. I said once he says, once he, say, once he says, give me your money. Okay, okay, okay. Let me get my money. Okay. Here, come move off the line. Okay. Do not go after the gun. Go off the line. Okay. As you come in, this hand needs to come up and shield your ear in case this gun goes off. I'm not hitting it. I'm not slapping it. So we don't do that. I come up and I shield my ear and I come here. This hand comes to the inside. Okay, we're going to use a spear hand strike right into the throat. Okay, as we grab here, okay, it's going to force his head to turn this way. I come around behind him. And this is why we have the safety glasses. I'm going to go right for that. Right those eyes. All right, look for other attackers. Push him away and go. That's my exit. Okay, I never touch the gun. I never cause that gun to go off. If it goes off, it goes off to him. I don't need to take it away. Why do I not need to take it away? Why do I not need to take the gun away? He can't shoot what he can't see. Okay? If he wants to try to listen for my footsteps. He's like, <laughs> okay? And when I call the cops, look for a blind guy, for the blind guy with a gun. <laughs> okay? And then what else am I going to tell him? You've got trace evidence on you. Exactly. You can't find him. Here's his DNA. Okay? Everybody got that? Okay. So, the technique here is I need to immediately get off the line of fire. All that comes out there, that's what's going to shoot. Okay? I need to immediately move. Okay? Just a little twist here to get my body out of the way as I'm stepping here. Here, this hand comes up. It's not to hit. I don't even want to touch this hand. This is to shield my ear and the side of my face and hands for last in case it does, in case it does go off. Okay? Just in case it does go off. Okay? This hand comes up underneath and drives. Spear hand strike right into the throat as I grab here, which is going to force him to turn away. Puts me behind him. What we're talking about maneuvering strategies. Anything we can do that's going to turn him and get him behind me, uh, so I can get behind him. This hand comes up here. This hand comes to this eye. This one comes to this one, and I rip across the eyes. Okay. I scan for multiple attackers. Nobody else here. Push him, and I'm gone. Okay. One little bit about going for the eyes here. You can cover, you just can scrape across the eyes. I prefer to use what called kind of a cupping action. I come in and I do a little sim upward semicircular motion. Upward semicircular motion. Keeping the palms on the side of the head. I can control the head. And these fingers come up, in, and back. And what does that do? Come up, in, actually lifts the eyelid and opens the eye if he closed it. Okay? Very, very effective technique. He will not see you as you run away and you're gone. Okay? That's your exit. Okay? One more time. From this, this, this side. I see. Move. Here. Strike. Grab this sleeve so he turns away. Up. Great. Okay? Scan for the attackers and go. Okay? Yes. One, one thing, and this, this goes back years and years in terms of teaching what I call counter assault, a counter assault rather than self defense. Um, people are, they, they used to teach, you know, you guide, gouge the guy's eyes and stick your fingers in them. And a lot of people won't do that because I don't want to blind this guy. Okay? However, scratch, a lot of women, men too, it's acceptable to scratch because it doesn't have the same connotation as, you know, sticking your fingers in their eye and gouging out their eyeball. Okay. This could conceivably do that, but you notice Mark stuck with the word scratch. Okay. And so your goal is to scratch, not remove. Right. Okay. 
Okay. Uh, yeah, ten. Okay. Uh, and one other word about the strike, the spear hand strike. A lot of people and use this. They'll keep a very flat, stiff hand. Uh, it's not good because you hit that has a tendency for your fingers to curl back and you're going to hurt your fingers. So just get a tight hand and curve it slightly. Just a slight curve in it makes it a much firmer and stronger striking serve. And it doesn't have to be all that hard. I'm not trying to go completely through this guy's trachea. All right. I'm just trying to get him to turn. Okay? Just trying to get him to turn. And I hold on to the sleeve and I strike here and it turns him away and I'm behind him. Grab, great. Scan for other attackers. Anybody else around? No. Push him away. Don't pull him back. Don't pull him back. The reason being, if I do this and I pull him back and drop him here, oh, what happened with that gun? I get, sh I get shot in the back. As I'm running away. Okay? Now explain that one to the cops. How you got shot in the back by a blind guy. I don't know, but it's not gonna work. Okay, anybody else need to see that again? Got that idea? Ukes, wear the safety glasses. People who are doing action, they're wearing the safety glasses. Run your fingers across the safety glasses. We can clean them off. TM will close on three sides. He comes he comes up and he puts the gun in my back and says, Don't turn around. Okay, so now I'm blocking the front and two sides, and he's behind me, and that's my exit. Okay, what do I do in that case? Okay, so, okay, same thing. Uh, whatever, whatever you want, whatever you want. Don't shoot. Whatever you, uh, whatever you want, I'll give it to you. And he says, "Give me your money." Uh, okay. You can't talk right now. <laughs> so he said, give me your money. Give but me he your says, money. you go okay. scan when you don't understand. So you're good. Yeah, and so you're, so okay, so okay, so okay, okay. And then what do you do? You give it to him. Okay, same thing. You're turning. You're turning. You still need to shield the side of your face. Here, on there. Strike, round, gouge, scan for other attackers. Only it's the exact same technique. Only difference is you've got to turn. Two things. Okay, first of all, you is, know where the gun is. Uh, what's that? You know where the gun is. I, it, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, it doesn't matter. I know where the where the gun is. It's in my back. You told me. Don't turn around. I got a gun. So I know it's I know it's behind me. Okay? So, same thing. All I need to do is turn, and once I turn, everything else is the same. Okay? Now in this one with the gun behind me, I need to make sure I clear my body as well. On this turn. As I turn, I want to do what we call kind of a shift and lunge. Okay, when I do it, I want to turn and move my body this way. Okay, so I know that it clears. Okay, because he may be a wise attacker, and that gun may be right there. Okay, it may not be right in my back. Okay, but I need to turn to the right anyway because. Most people are right-handed. I need to assume that it's right-handed. Okay, I'm going to try to sneak a peek. He says, don't turn around. I go, what? Huh? I'm going to try to sneak a peek and see exactly <laughs> where it is. But that doesn't always tell me everything I need to know. If I start to turn, and before I get turned, he says, no, I said, don't turn around. Go, okay, okay. All right? So, uh, at that, you know, I'm not going to push it too far. So, if I can see it, fine. If not, I'm just going to have to assume that it's in his right hand, that he's right-handed. I just got to make that assumption, and I got to go with this. Same thing, though. I need to turn, even if it's back here. Even if it's back here. As long as I make this here, when it goes off, it's still going to miss me. Okay? And then I turn it <coughs> here. Same technique. Break. Scan for other tap. And go. Okay? So it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whether the, he's got the gun in the back of my head. Okay? Or, you know, in, in my kidney, okay, same thing, here, and straight, uh, straight, okay, or if he's holding it back closer to his body. As long as I can take, sneak a peek and at least see where he is, okay, if I'm he, if he's there and I'm here, I can do it good, okay, at least, at least I need to know that he's close enough that I can do something here. Right. Here. Great. And go. Okay? 
So the same thing. All right, now one other thing you might not have picked up on, all right? Question I get all the time is, when do you know when to make your move? When do you know that it's okay to make your move? Has anybody picked up on it yet? Yep. Okay. Either immediately or after he's well, okay. I okay. Correction on that. Okay, because that's what I hear all the time. Some people just subscribe. Well, it's got to be either or. or say, I prefer this or I prefer that. But you've heard what he said. No. So you need to. He says that when you make to make your move, you need to do it either immediately before he gets settled, and it's a total surprise to him. Or wait a couple of moments till you think the situation is settled down and he feels more in control of the situation, right. and then you make your move. Okay. Um, uh, unfortunately, no. Uh, first of all, how are you gonna know that he feels in control? You, you can't read his mind. You don't know that. Okay. What do we always say? He says what? In your money. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna get around. around. I'm, okay, okay, I'm gonna get my money right now. When, you go when did I move? When you go for your money. When do you move? When he tells you to. Right. You move when he tells you to because now he's expecting you to move. He told you to move, so when you move it shouldn't be a surprise to him. Okay? Understand? That's when you make your move. When he tells you to. So the gun is at your back. I said, oh, uh, whatever you want, whatever you want. Just turn around, give me your money. Oh, okay, oh, okay, now. okay, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm getting it right now. Okay, I moved when he told me to move. Because he's expecting something to happen. Okay? Anybody ever tell you that before? No? First time you ever heard that? Oh, okay, you learned something today. Okay, very good. All right, guns behind you. Do that's okay. Well, I'm going to tell you what to do. When you turn, okay, exact same technique. I don't care which hand is in. Remember, I said I don't care if the gun's in the back of my head. Okay, I don't care if it's down here in my kidneys. I don't care if it's down here next to his body, okay? I don't care if it's in his left hand, okay? I just do the technique. And it's even better because I get even further off the line of fire anyway, okay? Okay? It doesn't matter. Just do the technique. You don't care where the gun is, which hand, just do it, okay? Am I clear before we go on to the next technique? That's the technique you do. When he's not holding on to you, you've got free range to move anywhere. Assume it's in his right hand, but if it's not, it doesn't matter. Okay? It doesn't matter. Okay. Now, those situations can happen, but realistically, okay, the person's not just going to come up and point gun at you like this. Okay? A real situation, it's not just giving your money. Okay, real situations. Give me your money. Right? right? That's, the, that's the threat. Okay? So, what did we say about situations where you cannot just run when he's holding on to you with the other hand? I can't just turn around and run. Even if I got a clear avenue of escape because he tries to run, I just pull him right back. Okay? Can't run. So that's close, this is, please. Huh? Just do that. He's gonna be the most he needs his glasses. Okay. Alright. Okay. <laughs> okay. So he grabs him. Alright, now this could be any this is any gun that's high. Okay, he could have this gun, you know, pointing right between my eyes. Okay. He could have this in my chest. Or he could, right here, right here. Okay, since this is probably the worst possible scenario, this is what we're going to deal with, okay? He could have you backed up against a wall, pushed it back against a car, 
or whatever, okay? But he's got his weight on you, he's grabbing here, and I simply cannot just run away. Okay, now, again, back to bad techniques. Often, okay, here, hand throw. Okay, did he go on the hand throw? Okay. As long as he's holding on here, you'll never get a hand throw because he's, hold, he's holding on. He's holding himself up. I'm trying to get him down, but he's holding himself up. And we're just, we're just fighting over this gun, okay? Which is going off in your face. It's going off in your face. Not a good idea, okay? So, don't try it. Don't try it. Just not. Uh, another one that's, that's shown is shoulder roll. Once again, he's holding, and i got to struggle. <laughs> you know, and he's, he's still holding on. I still haven't gotten away from him, okay? So, I've got, the problem is I've got a combination attack here. I've got a gun, and I've got a grab. And, I, and there's nothing I can do uh, until I deal with one or the other, okay? I can't try to deal with both at the same time. It just won't work. It just gets me into a, a struggle. Okay, so here, what i got to do, number one, i got to get my body off the line of fire, okay? So, I move when? Okay. What do you want? What do you want? I want the money. Okay. 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 I'm going for the money now. Okay. Here. Notice I immediately got my body off the line of fire. Okay. Come in with one hand. What did we say? We can't control it with just one hand. I need to get two hands on it, right? Okay. So immediately as I turn this, I'm not. I'm, I'm getting right here at the wrist, and I'm guiding this this way, and I place it right here in the crook of his elbow, and then this hand comes up over. So now I've got two control over, and actually three, because what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab his gi, or his sleeve here, and pull this in here, and that gun is trapped. Okay, see how the gun is trapped there in his own elbow. Okay, I'm going to pull that gun free. I'm going to pull the gun free. I'm trying. It's not going anywhere. Okay, if he doesn't have a jacket, he's just wearing a t-shirt or no t-shirt, let's look around the back of the bicep, and lock it in there. Pull this to you so that arm is locked in there and it's here. Now this that gun's locked in there. Okay? Now, since it's locked in there, I can do something else with the other with the other hand. Okay? So what I gotta do, is what, like I said, I gotta scan, scan for other attackers. I don't know who's behind me. I don't see anybody over there, but if I gotta see who's behind me, I gotta move him. Now to move him, I want to step with my right foot. In here and push against him to keep this arm locked in here because if I step back and go the other way it opens up and it allows him to pull it free so if I'm going to do this I need to step whether I'm grabbing here whatever I need to step in here to keep the pressure here so I need to step to my right and turn so I can look the other way okay now what we said about taking the weapon away only do it when you feel it's necessary or when you can do it safely Okay, this weapon, uh, this gun take away, okay, this, is, this is the only way you will do it at this level. There are other ways, but there's only one way that you're going to do a weapon take away or a gun take away in this course. And this is it. So you're here, you're locked it in here. Okay. Now that I've got this locked in here, this hand is trapped, this hand comes underneath, I put two fingers, if I see this, Two fingers on the trigger guard. And I pull the weapon out of his hand. Did I grab any dangerous areas? No. Okay. One that here again. And here. 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 Lock it in there. Okay. I move as I turn. It's coming underneath here. Okay. I pull it in here. If it points at him. It points at anybody. It's pointing at him. Okay. My index finger just simply slips into the trigger guard as I pull it free. Okay, and now I have the gun, and he's still trapped. But I don't want to just stay there. I need, still need to get away from him. Okay, what do we use? Rear hand strike, throat, actually, and go. Okay, I've got the gun, and I'm gone. I'm going to take this to the police station, and I'm going to report a crime. Okay, to, to run, to run with a gun like this is hard on your finger, and I don't want to grab it because that's mess up his fingerprints if there are any on it. Okay, so it's easier to carry the gun when you're running 
Here, just take your thumb, in, point of your thumb, tip of your thumb, touch your index finger, pull it over, put your thumb through it, wrap your hand around your thumb, and now you've got a good, secure way to carry that gun as you run to the police station. Okay? Do not run into the police station like this. <laughs> not a good idea. Okay? Go find, put it in a paper plastic bag, and then take it to the police station. Go up, lay it on the counter, take three steps back and go, there's a gun in that bag. Okay, why do we do that? Because I come in, go up to the counter and say, okay, there's a gun in that bag. Every cop in there is going to draw his gun, he's going to point straight at your head. Okay, because you're too close to it. All right? You put the gun, you put the gun in a bag, on the counter, you take three steps back, then you go, there's a gun in that bag. Okay? Take your, okay, and then they'll process it, they can process it, they can process the gun. It's a gun off the street. Um, so that's how you take a gun and report a crime. Okay? Don't go and say, what? I took this off a criminal. No, just go in. I want to report a crime. This is how it happened. Okay, so one more time. Here. Here. He's holding on, so I can't, I can't, can't get away. It's on my name. Okay. Move as soon as he told me. And lock that in. Move. Scan for other attackers. And then underneath. Two fingers on the trigger guard. And it slips free. And it's out. Try it. Okay. Hi. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Well, he's got it in that position. He can lock it up again. Mm hmm. Concerned that if it fires and it gouges out the back of your hand, it'll slide. No, my, right hand, there, no my hand is, my hands would probably cut my arm. Okay. Cut him more. Okay. okay. So, here, so this is why you up. want to wear, if he's wearing any kind of clothing at all, you want to grab sleep. Yeah. He's got nothing, you can come in here, but it's still fairly, fairly safe. Okay, at this point. Okay, so I just want to make a point. This is taught sometimes way. I've seen, I've modified every every technique. When I see something wrong with it, I modify it to make it different. What I've seen here is here, come in here, and here, and try to strip the weapon away this way. But we've already said we don't want to grab a gun like this unless we absolutely have to. The other thing is to come in here and just strip it out. Strip it out of his hand. Okay, but can you see a problem with that? Okay. Um, number one, everybody that handles those weapons knows that they're pretty heavy. If that lands on your foot, that's a bad thing. But also, older weapons can discharge when they hit the ground. So that's not just not a good idea. So you've got to take that weapon away. That's why I said the only, only, only safe way we're going to use in this level is the trigger guard method. Two fingers onto the trigger guard. Pull it, the index finger slips into the trigger guard, and you take it away. Okay? There are other methods, but at this level, that's all we're going to use. Okay? That's the only way to do it safely at this point. Okay, any any more questions on that one? Anybody need to see that again? Okay, all right, try holding on to our clothing. Okay? Once again, with the clothing, I got nowhere to go. And uh, the other one where we assumed it was on his right hand, and we turn to the right, okay? In this one, we know it's in his right hand because we feel his hand here, and this gun is in our back. We know it's in his right hand, but I can't turn this way because he's holding on here. As soon as I start to turn this, this way, he just pulls me back into him, and he pulls the trigger, right? Okay? I can't turn that way. So if he's not grabbing, you turn to the right. If he is grabbing, you turn towards the, the grabbing hand, okay? So what we're going to do is, is we turn. Once again, do your lunge, Except to get your body as clear, clearly out of the way as possible. As you turn, you bring your left hand in and you grab his clothing, or if he's not, not wearing uh, a shirt or anything, just hook over here and pull down. Okay? It may free the, the grab, but the, the main thing that we're going for here, as we notice, as we turn here, as I grab this and pull, see what happens to the other hand? The gun goes that way. It keeps me, it keeps his body shielding between me and the weapon. So the chance that he can turn, yeah, yeah, so the chance that, so the chance that he can um, turn that gun back into me here, I'm safe, okay? I'm safe. And from here, 
we do? Scratch that. Scratch. Scan for other attackers. Push them away. There we go. Okay. And this one, an added little bonus that you can do to make sure that that gun goes back that way. Is you turn here. Okay. A nice little knee shot to the kidney to make him arch back. And that'll keep that gun out there. Okay. At worst, it'll come up a little bit, but by the time he tries to bring this back this way, you've already scratched, turned, and go. Okay, so from this side, okay, I got to turn towards it. Grab your hand, this hand comes right into the, the elbow, down, scratch. You can do a knee shot if I want to. It's just an option. Turn, push, and go. Okay, clear enough? Yeah. Move towards the grabbing hand, look at the elbow, pull it down. Nice, there, okay. Uh, I think in a room like this, he pulls a knife out, what do we do? Run. 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 Okay, I, there's nothing obstructing me, nothing keeping me from, <coughs> from moving. Okay, okay, but now we're going to invent a scenario. Once again, we're back at the ATM machine, and we turn around, and there he is with a knife, and that's my only exit. Okay, is the technique going to be any different from a gun? Does it need to be any different from a gun? Okay, I don't need to worry about it going off. Okay, but I still want to bring his hand up here just in case he decides he wants to come this way. Okay, but it's not coming up here to hit it or knock it away. Okay, it's just a protection. It's just shield. Here, right. Great. Scan for other attackers and leave. Okay. From behind, what do we say same same thing. Okay, get your body off the line of thrust. Okay, just like a bullet coming out of a gun, it's coming straight at you. Get off the line here. Okay. Strike, straight the eyes, scan for multiple attackers, and flee. Okay, in his left hand, it's in his left hand. Okay, strike, straight, scan, and go. Okay, exact same technique with a knife. Okay, whether it's in the front, in the back, left hand, right hand, high, low, doesn't matter. It's the exact same technique. Okay, so very quickly, pick up a knife, do that one a couple of times, and we'll move quickly through some more knives. You mean to go for the weapon? Or go for go your for weapon? Go for my weapon, yeah. <laughs> no, go for my money. Okay, this is just come up lightly to keep that away from my. Yeah, this comes up in here closely. Slice that wrist. Okay. Turn, scan for other attackers. Then put that. Okay. Put that hand throw back. Something's going to separate. But it doesn't matter. He's on the ground and I'm gone. Okay. I don't worry about taking that weapon. Just stay. Okay. Because if it doesn't and I'm here trying to take this weapon away and he still doesn't want me to have it, he just yank. Okay. I got cut unnecessarily. I should be gone. Okay? Anybody need to see that again? Got it? Okay? In. Both hands. Slice. Use that arm to turn him and then whip back. Be careful on that hand throw. That's a lot of momentum. Uh, this, this time, this time the knife is down here. Okay? Uh, he's, he's grabbing. As usual, he's grabbing here. He's got the knife down here. Okay? Um, once again, here, we see a dangerous... Uh, of thrusting into me, so I need to get off the line of thrust. Okay, so I need to turn here and get off the line of thrust. And this this hand, uh, let's do this way. Maybe you can see it a little better. Okay, so here I come in. This one comes in. I get off here, and then I immediately get the second hand on it. Okay, underneath the hand. Okay, now once again, I got to either get this knife out of his hand or get this hand off. Okay. So, in this one, it's fairly easy to get the knife out of his hand. From here, just take it and drive it up underneath the arm and, okay, come to me, hold on, all right, hold, hold on. Um, if, this is, if this is a double-sided knife, yeah, it's going to cut and it's just going to come off and then you just basically go into this other, other technique. But if a single knife, if he's really holding on, okay, just because you place this up underneath his arm, I mean, but I bring it up, she rips the knife out of his hand, okay? Now that he's let go, now I don't have to worry about the knife. I just don't want to step on it, okay? Then I'm not worried about this. I can let go with this, okay? And from here, I can strike 
when he comes back here, if he doesn't let go, I'll do it two or three times until he gets the message. <laughs> okay. Okay. And then I can do my hand throw and make him land on the knife. Okay. So just just so you see it, uh, and then we're going to do uh, do one more. Uh, just show this one one more time. It's here. Here. Bring it up. Strip the knife out of his hand. Strike to get him to let go and do your hand throw. Okay, because he's not going to go down on the hand throw until you start getting him, um, getting him off balance. Okay, so what's the last one we want to do here before we? Ah, okay. Everyone wants to see this one. Um, he's grabbing here, and this is around the, the front. Okay, with this grabbing, I'm once again I'm limited in where I can go and what I can do. Okay. Once again, I just need to keep this from slicing here. So I'm not trying to grab it, not trying to pull it. All I'm trying to do is come in here lightly, get it here. In fact, I don't really even want him to really know what I'm doing here because what I'm going to do is, as this hand is coming up, when I move, when he tells me to move, okay, move, okay, here, okay. So he sees the movement, but he can't really see this coming up, okay. This comes in here, it's going to hook in here lightly. Only pull it down slightly as your left elbow comes up. Do a good strike right into the six. Okay. Now the key is it, 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 you don't want it to be a big strike. You don't want to. You don't want to do this. Okay, because you hit him that hard, it's going to knock him back, and what happens is. Okay. I just want it to be a good firm punch into the solar plexus because you hit somebody in the solar plexus, what do they do? Uh, they go forward. Okay, so this, this is here. When I hit him in the solar plexus, that hand actually goes forward. I open this up. Okay, so it gives me room to get the, this other hand in here. And from here, all I'm going to do is I'm going to slide out. I bring my left foot back, and I slip out of it. Now, you may be tempted to try to drive that into him at that point, but he can resist this too much. I need to do something that's going to get him off balance. So. The other thing is, I don't want him to reach and try to grab the knife with the other hand. And now he's got it in his left and i got a problem, okay? So I need to keep it away from that hand. So I'm going to turn this, and once again, I'm going to turn around this way, okay? So I can scan for other attackers, okay? Let me stand up a little bit, okay? If I just move him around, he's going to move that way. And now, I, when I reverse direction, I'm going to come down, okay? So. Uh, could do if he knows how to do a nice forward roll, that's fine, but attacker's not going to know how to do that. It's going to crack that arm. Okay, so once again, here, because this one's coming up lightly, lightly just to hook in here and keep him from slicing. Okay, good firm shot here, it's in forward, this hand immediately comes up, I step back with my left foot and sneak out of here. Okay, to keep, to keep it away from his other hand, I want to turn him. And put my knee here. And now, this is going to snap. Do I need to take that away? No, he's down and I'm gone. Okay? Any questions on that technique? No? Got it? Be careful with that turn because there's a lot of torque on that, that arm. Okay? Elbow shot, sneak out underneath, turn him, then put your forward throw. Okay? Got it? Try to uh, in the hand out. Okay. What I get asked about all the time is, okay, what do you, what knife knife attacks? What do you do about the the prison yard shank? <laughs> okay. You um, signal to the guy in the tower to exactly. take him out. Okay. <laughs> my first question then is, what, my first question is, what are you doing on a prison yard? Okay. <laughs> but you know, those prisoners, they eventually get out of prison. And believe it or not, they really don't rehabilitate them when they're in prison. Okay? What? Uh, it's a little surprise to me. But they pay some of the things that they pick up in prison. Okay, so uh, in, in that situation, you're not dealing with, you're not probably not dealing with a knife like this. You're dealing with something much smaller, much smaller, shorter blade, maybe even very small homemade uh, type of blade. But the prison yard shank is very dangerous. We're not going to use this one. Obviously, we'll still go ahead and use this one. But you need to understand in the prison yard shank, the they'll back you up against the wall, or even they'll come in. Now they come in on this side and they'll push the head up. And they're pushing the head up. They're going to try to poke you with as many holes as they possibly can, as quickly as they possibly can. Okay? Problem is, with your head pushed up, you can't see 
the knife, the arm, or anything. You can't do it. You can't grab this. You can't block it. There's nothing you can do because you can't see it. And he knows that. That's the reason he attacks that way, okay? It's an educated killer, all right? So when somebody comes in like that, you need to push his head up, and he's going to start poking in there. Um, you got to move quickly or you're going to die, okay? Like I said, you, you can't see this. He's trying to grab this or block it, okay? It's just not going to work, okay? Don't even try, okay? What you got to do is immediately protect yourself, okay? But when someone comes up, he pushes up against you, you ex even expect that there's a knife. You've got to protect yourself. What you've got to do is bring, bring your arms up and protect your body. Your right, let go for just a second. Your right hand needs to protect your heart. It's like you're making a pledge of allegiance to the flag. And your right hand protects your liver. You cover up, okay? It's usually a shorter blade, even if it does penetrate. That extra inch here or the bones in your hand may prevent it from penetrating could save you. That's all you can do at that point. You've got to cover up and protect. Hand, right hand over heart, left hand over liver. Okay? That's your only, that's your only hope at that point until you can do something to begin to, to, to get out of this. Okay? So when this comes up, it, when you even sense that this, this is coming up tight, it pushes you back to me. Cover up. Okay? Bring your left elbow up. Okay? Okay? Probably, see, he's cooperating, probably not. <laughs> just hold, just hold on. And I'm trying. What you're doing, you need to do it with some power. Right hand come up, and your left hand comes in and grabs. Okay, we'll stuff going back. Eyes. And go. Okay, but you got to protect your body first. Hand over heart, left hand over liver. Okay, protect. Elbow up, grab, here, great, and go. Okay, you probably still may get poked a couple of times, but it's better to get poked <laughs> ten times, and hopefully this will protect you a little bit. Okay, but just so when you read that description and you know exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, and so you can go back and practice. Okay, any other questions about what we uh, covered there? There's there's probably four more techniques in there that we didn't cover. And this should be fairly easy to, to figure out. So we're gonna. Uh, what I was talking about, always assuming that there are multiple attackers, okay, and when uh, we would go through the scanning for attackers, uh, I can't, I don't know what's behind me, okay, so when I come in, I strike, I go and I come in here, if I didn't thoroughly check around, notice how we would Scratch the eyes, go for the eyes, and then I would say scan for attackers and bring them around. So what, why did I hold him up? Why did I keep him next to me as I was doing that? Why didn't I just drop him immediately? <laughs> He's a shield. shield. Not a shield. He's a shield. He's, He's a my human shield. Idea. Okay, no. if someone, if, if I'm here and I don't even see anybody behind me, mm -hmm. okay, just the fact that I turn around as this person is rushing in, I've got a shield, and he gets the knife in the gut or the bullet in the chest, not meaning it might not go all the way through him into me, but maybe it's not going to be quite so bad on me. So the reason I don't initially just drop him or push him away in the technique is to create that shield, okay? So that's the reason we do it. So just to make sure everybody is, is clear on that. Okay, the, the, uh, one that we didn't show is... Number one, he's grabbing, so we're on more realistic. And now the gun is low. Okay, we did the one that was up here when we came in and placed it into the, the arm. Okay, uh, for one that's low, okay, because again, I need to get out of the line of, uh, line of fire. So when do I move? Mm -hmm. so he when tells he me to move. So he tells me your wallet. Oh, okay, okay, I'm getting my wallet here. And then immediately get the other hand on it with the two hand control. Okay, and then once I get two hand control, then we need to turn it back into him. Okay, now, hopefully he's smart enough to realize that he's not in a good position. He's either got to get out of the way or he's going to get shot. So the only way to do that is to let go. The other reason he may let go is that he wants to get the gun in his other hand. So either way, he's going to, he, either way he's going to let go. So the fact that he lets go, as soon as he lets go, now... I want to make sure that he doesn't get it in the other hand. So as soon as as soon as as soon as he 
Let's go. I'm going to slam into that arm like we did before. Turn, scan for other attackers, and then put that back. Take that wrist out, the arm out. He's not going to be able to pull that trigger, so I don't need to take that gun away anyway, and I'm gone. Okay, so just from the other angle. Okay, he's, he's grabbing. Here, Give me your wallet now. Oh, okay, 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 I'm getting it right now. Okay. Move in, turn it back into it. Makes him let go. And slam in, turn, scan with the hand throw, okay? And if I'm a situa in a situation where I feel I really do need to take that gun away, I can take the gun away, but otherwise I'm not, I'm not going to worry about it. Okay. Escort, escort, somebody, I'll take care of um, The one comes up, I need to come up. Okay, I think you need to come, you need to come with me, okay? If you did something to somebody, they do that to you, but, uh, you've got other problems, but, People want to see that kind of thing, so so he comes in, and he should. He's just, we're probably in a crowded area, so he doesn't want to make a big scene. He wants to get me out of there, so he can take me out back and shoot me. Okay, so um, he's probably not grabbing, but the hand is still here anyway. But because he's not actually grabbing, it makes me it makes it easier for me to to turn. So what I what I want to do is oh, okay let's go all right and he probably wants me to look casual too he doesn't want me to put my hands up look casual yeah, sure. <laughs> okay okay so we we'll start to, uh, I'll take only a couple of steps he says move so move. I move okay uh, I turn so that it presses that against his body okay and that means the gun is pointed out in the other direction what I want to do is immediately get this hand behind this tricep. I can grab or just push it here because what he's naturally going to want to do is snatch that arm back. So if I can keep that elbow pinned in here, he can't pull it back. And it will give me a chance to pull this back in and trap this arm in this way. And it's what we call the unbendable arm. Okay, I'm not grabbing it here. Again, I'm turning my wrist in down hard, hard against it. It's not pulling in this way. It's I mean this way, okay? Unbendable arm. Everybody familiar with unbendable arm? Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's what I'm doing here. Unbendable arm. What's how that turns that gun away from me? And I, I've got this trapped in here. Uh, so that arm's not going to go anywhere. And I turn this way to get the gun away from the other hand. Okay, because mm -hmm. if I stay in here, he just he gets it with the other hand and he shoots me. Okay, so I gotta immediately get this out of reach of his other hand. So I, once again, I gotta turn him around this way, search, uh, scan for other attackers. Okay, and then here at this point, there's not much I can do as far as throw goes. So I'll use my trigger guard takeaway. Two fingers. In here onto the trigger guard as I pull my index finger slips in and I have the gun okay once I have the gun he's here to the throat and I'm gone okay so one more time from this, from this side okay here okay let's go okay okay turn in track both arms Turn, get that gun away from him, scan for other attackers, trigger guard, take away, drag, get him away from me, and I'm gone. Okay? So that's that particular technique. Okay, the other techniques were knife techniques. A couple of did yesterday were stationary knives here, here, uh, things like that. My threats. You did the shank. Yeah, that's okay. Right. Uh, this one is, okay, what if he, okay, think about this one, people. Okay, he's here, he's getting ready to drive this knife right into the, right into your gut, okay? What should he do? Run. Run. I'm not controlling him, he's got enough space, he'd be out that door before I even get there, okay? All right, so. Basically, that's it. But if this happens so fast that you turn around and just all of a sudden that, that knife is, is going to here, downward parry, okay. strike, great, aim for other attackers. Okay, so your knife thrust is no different than 
Am I here? Am I here? Or it's if, if, I got, if I have no time to react and that knife is coming at me, okay, then it's the exact same technique I did every other gun defense in that what realm. What old. some of us are thinking of as a, a Jordan. You did a Jordan knife. Yeah, did a Jordan. <laughs> okay. All right, so clear enough on that one. Simple enough. Uh, and getting back to, again, uh, whether, it, whether it's in his left hand or his right hand, I don't care. I'm going to do the same technique. I don't care. So even if it's his right hand, strike, great, and for other attackers, push away. So in that vein, if, uh, let's say he's doing, giving me one of those, okay? He's giving me one of those, okay? I don't want to come out here because I'm going to get hurt. Okay, so I'm coming out here, 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 and here. So when we said had the gun, gun attacks at the back and we didn't know which, which hand it was in, left or right, doesn't matter. I still come in, do the same technique here. If it's in his left hand, okay, here, I don't care. Right. Here, same thing. If I have to move to the other side, if I, if I don't want to go this way, and I need to go that way to get out of that knife swipe, I don't care. Scan, straight, and down. Okay? So the only difference is, number one, like I said, you need to learn techniques based on whether the knife is in his right hand or in his left hand, or whether you don't know which hand it's in. Okay? You need to be able to do it going to the left. You need to be able to do it going to the right. So that's the only, only thing is, when you see the knife is coming from that direction, I don't want to go that direction. I want to go this direction. Great. Exact same technique. It's just, I'm just being safe by going the other direction. Right, and they're ready to punch, and you've been trying to talk them out of it, and you realize you're not going to be able to talk them out of it. You're going to start... The first thing boxers do is they need to test distance. So the left jab is going to come out. We're going to assume he's right-handed. So the left jab is going to come out. I want you to watch the punch. You see the angle of the attack? This is the, the karate type block is this way or this way to deflect. I'm going to teach you a faster way of doing it so you don't get hit and you can control the person. When that and in the same theme, uh, what we were doing, talking yesterday, a hard block. Okay, I'm going to make the defense actually an attack. Okay, so as this punch comes out, I'm, the first thing is get in the same stance he is, bring your arms up shoulder width, get into a nice boxing stance, and the reason I do this is I want a target. Anything that comes inside my hands, I'm going to attack it. If I don't see hands coming in and I see the shoulders moving, I know that it's coming around and I'm going to attack it differently. We're going to just attack here. So it comes through my hands, coming at me. I'm going to, I'm not going to block this way. I don't, I'm not turning my shoulder. I attack straight into it, right at his jaw, which because of the angle, he's coming at me here. I'm going to hit it about 20 degrees. And just a two inch push here moves this six inches. So I don't get hit. Now, the other thing about karate blocks is they over block because now that it's missed my face there's no reason to waste energy to keep moving it okay this one eliminates that whole issue is i just palm strike it now the, the key here is i'm actually striking i'm trying to hit the forearm just in front of the elbow if you hit the elbow that's okay too but you don't want to hit past it you want to hit the soft part of the arm just a nice palm, don't, you don't have to hit like this, because you, that's going to hurt. If you hit a straight palm shot, what it does is it forces the arm away and it turns his body. So that if you wanted to, you can immediately slide in behind him. Okay? Okay, so now all I want you guys to do is practice. He can throw the right cross, same thing. The lead hand, now this one here is on this side, it's whatever side it is, palm strike. I don't want you to block sideways, I want you to palm strike, just palm strike. 
So grab your partner, and I want the attacker to throw just at worst stage. When Steve throws the punch, I'm going to move away from the, his backhand, because the backhand's hard, so that's front. I palm strike, I'm moving to hitch, I'm moving away from him, okay? Because I want to get behind him. Now, in real life, if this was a fight, I may do this once or twice, but then I'm going to get here and I'm going to do something and finish the fight. Okay, I'm not going to dance with the guy. But the point is, I don't want you to get hit. Most people lose the fight because they got hit right on the front. They didn't block it properly. I want you to learn. This is a very effective block. I'm not doing that. I am hitting straight through and putting, just like I'm jabbing, he's jabbing me, I'm jabbing him right back, but I'm hitting the forearm. The, the cross, same thing. Just comes straight through like you're hitting right to the center of his body, and it knocks him off center, okay? Practice that at home. Okay, now. Um, the other thing that I wanted to go over is use this attack. The, the street is the typical street attack. Now, a little bit more rounder. From a hip throw point of view, judo, you have to fight with somebody. But if you apply in jujitsu, you're not trying to fight with the guy. He's coming at you, he's attacking you. So if you want to apply a judo throw, don't stop the momentum. I see a lot of people, even some black belts, stop the momentum by doing this. They step into it, and then they, re then they start back by pulling them. You don't have to do that. They're already coming at you. Just turn in front of them. Watch my feet. Just do a slow motion. I adjust. He's coming at me already. I block and strike at the same time. Okay, that's my marking technique. And I said yesterday. Okay, so as he comes, one, step, block, punch, all at once. Don't do it one, two, three. One. Now, because of his position, he's coming at me. This is a committed attack. He's doing it slow, but if it's committed, his momentum is coming, and I hit him, and then all I have to do is one more move. I have to rotate. So this hand is going to drop under for Ipon Senagi, turn around, and boom. He's right in position. All I did was turn, boom, and he's in it. Because he's coming at me. I don't have to pull him or do anything. He does 90% of the work. Okay? So this is what I want you to practice. Block, punch, and step. Turn, and boom. And throw your Good balance. <laughs> Steve, excellent. Take your, put your right foot forward. Remember that you don't want to throw this way. He's off balance over here. So that means your rotation has to be to the center of his feet. Mm. The other key point in, in judo is this part, of, especially in Ipon Sayamagi, if you lock your arm like this and don't reach and grab, just lock it, watch what happens to his body. When I lock it and pull as a lever here, and all I do is rotate my hip. See what happens? If you do that in your technique, the throw will be so easy, okay? Don't come in here and try to pull him around. Just step in, lock it, and turn your hip. And he's off his feet, okay? That's just practice at home. Thank you. His name was Rocky Stone. And he was a very, he spots your sought height, except he was, you know, Rocky Stone. He literally, <laughs> and, uh, but he was, he had also done a lot of boxing. And, and he, boxers, for, boxers are probably the most difficult people for martial artists to deal with, okay? One, because they've got this one, two, three, okay? And you have to block these one, two, because that's the radar. That's what they use to sense where you are, so this one can come in and do the dirty work, okay? So you really gotta go after those first two, those little feints, okay? Uh, the second thing is they don't stand there. They're, they're, they're bouncing all over the place, you know, like their feet are on fire. And so you have to, you're constantly dealing with a person who's moving around in addition, okay? And that's what makes them difficult to work with, okay? Because they're, 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 they're footworking all over the place. If you ever watch, you know, 
boxing on the TV or anyplace else. They don't stand around much until they get really tired. Okay. Okay. Got to deal with the nice stuff. Um, and and I forgot my latex gloves, so we're going to have to do this nicely. Okay. Uh, now that you've done it, Okay. Now, yes, sir. Um, we're, we're going to start from the head and work down. Okay. And these are the not nice techniques um, that do work. Okay. One, okay, he's got, although they're hidden on Chris, he's got two ears. <laughs> okay, one on each side of his head. Okay, and where's Danny? This is really neat for taming guys. Uh, <laughs> okay, because he, he, he and, and a lot of this comes from counter assault training, which I for you for control. Yeah, for because I don't like to call it self defense. For me, the, the word self defense means you've been attacked. It's too late. Okay. And I like I like to be I like women to be a little offensive in what they're doing. Okay, uh, and, and part of it's leading. So I'm this good-looking girl that you picked up on. Okay, I feel for you. <laughs> okay, but anyway, you you hear and you, what you, you leave this poor sucker on? You got you stick two fingers in his ears and start turning them. Okay. <laughs> okay, so that's one thing. It's not nice, but it, it does work. It's tremendously annoying. But the guy will just back away and he won't, you know, unless he's really after you, he'll tend to leave you alone. If you don't want to stick your fingers in, grab an ear and twist it, okay? Either way, okay? Or grab the, the little bottom thing and pull up fast, okay? Yes, it's going to tear, tear ear, okay? But if he's really after you, the person's really after you, this is a quick point. It's messy, it's bloody, it's a moderate injury, okay? Yeah, I can be sewn back, okay? But what you're after is pain and blood and, and things that will make a person think they've really hurt seriously, okay? Just because you lose this outer part of your ear doesn't mean you can't hear anymore. But that's the fear that's going to go through a person's head, okay? Um, okay, we got the honorable eyes, okay? Uh, people have, you know, I've seen a lot of guys, well, what you do is you poke this, you, you do the uh, three, stooges. three Stooges routine. And a lot of people are very hesitant about this because they don't want to blind, blind a person. Okay? That's what makes Mark's technique work so well. People are not hesitant about scratching across. Okay? So what I usually do is recommend scratching across the face. You're probably going to get the eyes or the eyelids. Okay, and, and people can handle that. That's a cool technique to do because you're not poking their eyes out. But the reality is that you can basically do enough damage, if, particularly if you've got nails, where you're going to blind the person anyway. But psychologically, in terms of self-defense, it's a more acceptable thing to do. Okay, working down from two eyes, we have what's next that has two? Nose. Nose! Okay. Now, a lot of this comes from Katsugo, okay? He's got two nose, uh, he's got one nose, two openings, and if you're really into where you've got to protect yourself, you take one finger, stick it up a nostril. Use a kubotan. You, you can use a kubotan, you can use a pencil, you can use your keys, you can use small, anything you want, okay? If you give your toes great. something, fingers, fingers work great, because most people have practice using them on their own notes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so this is not as easy. You're right. Yeah, to, yeah. Okay. And so you stick your finger up their nose. That is tremendously annoying. Okay. And then you can either push back or push to the left. Whichever, you know, if you right hand and left hand, you're going to put, and this is a natural movement, just stick it up there and push. Okay. You'll be amazed at how fast that person goes back and down. Okay. Plus, they're going to have a really bloody nose. Okay? Is it a serious injury? Unless you rip the nostril because you went up too fast? Okay? It's not as bloody nose, it's not a serious injury. It'll heal. Okay? But you're, you're trying to create some psychological damage here. So you just stick a finger up their nose. Okay? Pardon? 
he could rip out the nose ring. Yeah, he could rip out the nose ring. Okay. Uh, years ago, I went to Camp Don Zamru. There was a guy there who was, he's retired to Hawaii. He used to be a uh, narcotics undercover up in Seattle, Washington. And he would walk around. This guy was weird. He'd walk around with a trench coat on. Now, he's not a big guy. No guy. Um, Bernie something. Bernie, Bernie Lau, I think. Anyway, and all I knew was from past experience was he, he had a whole school, he, he was like a whole school of weapons, different weapons, and what he'd do, he was a good black book, he'd walk around with other black and he'd pull out a weapon and see, just to see what they'd do. And, and we were, you know, I was just walking down and he comes around the corner, whips out a sawed-off shotgun, sticks it up my nose. Okay, barrel's about this long. I knocked it away, took it away, you know, took it away from him. And I, he said, you're the only person that's responded that way. He says, other black belts, have others do they look at it. Okay? You don't want to look at a gun barrel. They get bigger as the longer you look at them. Okay? <laughs> and if there's a shotgun up my nose, I don't want to lose my nose and everything that's behind it. Okay? And that's the only thing you can do. Okay? But, you know, the nose is a really effective target if you want to make your, you know, stick the finger up, stick a shotgun right up here, you know. And, and you've got to react. Okay, side issue. Okay, we've taken care of the nose. We've taken care of his ears. We've removed his eyes. We've made, given his nose a, a new dimension. Okay, because you can get both fingers too. That's actually hard to do. Okay, the mouth. Okay, the guy wants to kiss you. I shouldn't be telling you this. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Part of being successful in defending yourself is leading the other person on. No one says you have to be honest in your intentions. Well, your intentions are honest. It's just, okay. And so you, you have this guy here. Okay, isn't he cute? Okay. <laughs> okay, what you do is you slide your thumbs down to the corner of his lips. Okay, corner of his lips. Very easy. Easy to do. Real lean on him. And then you go, yeah! Inside his cheekbones, inside his cheeks. Okay. Don't have your thumb sticking out. They're inside and just go straight back. Okay. He will have a whole new smile. Can you position him yeah. here to here? See, he's suffering. Off. He's nervous. It's not a nipple really. Trust me, I won't do this to you. Okay, you're here. You're just looking to have the latex gloves. Right. You want to get under the latex gloves, and you slide your thumbs inside, and then just go up to his ears. Okay. It's really simple. It tears easily. This is a major injury. And keep, keep them like this yeah, away from the yeah, teeth. Keep away from the teeth. You don't want to get bit. Okay? Because then you have a problem. Okay? And after you get done, find some place where you can wash your hands real fast. Um, now, I know there are a lot of communicative diseases that you can pick up from other people's body fluids. Okay? But, the alternative, particularly for, for women, is if this guy is planning to rape you, there's a risk of bodily fluid exchange anyway. So you have to say, you know, you have to weigh risk versus your personal safety. Okay? <coughs> and I'd much rather take the risk than be dead or be raped. And, and I, can't, I can't, as a male, I can't visualize or even conceive of being raped or, or the act of it. Okay? Uh, so I'm not going to say any you know, empathetic or sympathetic because that's that's a bunch of bull for men to say that to women. Um, but men can get raped. What? Men can. I know men can get raped. Okay. I've been on a couple calls. Okay. Pardon? I've been on a couple calls for the. Yeah, you know, it's still alive. there can be male yeah. rape. Oh yeah, you. Have. But uh, unless you, you know, you it's, it's something you can't really be empathic, empathetic about empathic, empathetic. Empath I forget because. It, it is such a violation of the person. Okay. Anyway, so you got this. So you're here. Okay. You're back. Okay. He's got a whole new smile. Now, there's one incident. Uh, guys don't carry compacts around. They drive them. Um, but <laughs> don't plan on words. It. But if you have a compact, you know, put the label. Okay. Um, lady, you need to have a metal one. Don't get a plastic one. Because uh, this one of Hal's students years ago. I was trying to pick her up in a bar. She got up. She wanted this little technique from him. Okay. Guy, she's getting more friendly with the guy. She's leading him on because he's trying to, you know, make a connection with her. And they get close enough, and she turns the compact on his lips. 
Clamps down. Pulls away. <laughs> okay? It ain't nice, but it works. Okay? Here, you want some DNA? <laughs> Here's his lip, part of his lip print. Okay? Um, the other way... <laughs> The other, the other technique is using the lipstick, okay? Uh, lipstick for most, I, I'm married, I one. Most mm -hmm. containers are plastic, which is, you need to find ones that have metal, even if it's not your favorite color. And you get that top in your hand, okay? Take the lipstick out and pow, okay? And then you say, you, officer, you look for this guy who's, some, who's Swiss. Because he's going to have a hole in his cheek. <laughs> okay? And um, because the, yeah, yeah, right. It's just uh, cheap. <laughs> <laughs> that was too cheesy for us to get. Anyway, okay. Now we've got a guy who's got a, here's a rip, okay, or you've turned your finger inside, which can be very painful. Okay. You're not going to get to the eardrum to make him deaf. Okay? You've taken out his eyes, you've taken out his nose. He's got a nice smile, part of his lip is missing, and now you put a hole in one cheek. Okay? Still fighting, that's fine. No, you're yeah, he's still fighting you because he's high. He's tough. He's tough. Okay. Okay, so now we gotta work down. Okay. Um, I'm not gonna deal much with the mid -century. There's not really too much there you can well, you can grab the pet if he's got pets, you can grab and turn inward and down. Okay, you can. Okay, if he's being Captain Buffalo and doesn't have a shirt on, or even if he's got a loose shirt on, most men do not shave their armpits. Yeah. Okay, you can grab hair in the armpit. Don't pull. Don't pull. Don't tr you know. Don't turn away. Calm down. Most men will react rather fast to that. Okay, uh, you remember. Uh, a black dog girl, Hispanic, uh, at OB. Guys would not work out with her. Why? Get off of here. They wouldn't work out with her in, in class. They really didn't want to. Durandori. If she saw chest hair, grab, twist. Okay? <laughs> and that was her trademark. Okay? Guys don't like that. It hurts a lot. It's worse than getting hair grabbed up here. They don't expect it. Okay. Now, we have to move down, okay? Um, then, <laughs> okay, this is really not nice to guys. Well, it's not nice to guys. <laughs> guys, if you will not want to attack a girl ever after you get done with this. Okay, from here, you're going to go down, and we're now getting into an, an actual real rape situation, okay? Where girls, he's got me down, or guys, and whatever. If, and this takes a lot of presence of mind by the victim, okay, but it's been done, okay, is you have to, at some point, you have to lead him on to think you're going to cooperate, okay, and this will get him all excited, because now I don't have to fight this girl, okay, and what you do is if you can get one hand free, okay, and he's ready. You get your hand down there, grab the testicles, grab real fast and real hard. Okay? This will get a really unique reaction from the guy. Okay? Everything on him will straighten out. <laughs> it's, he's going to go stiff. Okay? He's going to go into what is called catatonic shock. This is extremely painful. And it may or may not last, you know, may last several seconds, it may last longer than that. You need to, once you've done your grab and squeeze real hard and fast, you need to get away. Okay? He won't be able to keep you under him because he's going to be ridden. Really oh, oh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so a really good you know, I know this is gross. No one's, I, as I said, this is not nice stuff. But it works. Okay? And we're not practicing that. We're way. not going to practice <laughs> this. Because I don't want to have to call a med paramedic several times. They don't have enough, and they don't have enough ambulance service up here to 
Okay. So anyway, I'll walk. <coughs> so we we've, we've worked our way down. Okay. Um, these are things that are, are extremely effective. They work very fast. Okay. Um, and and if you're really desperate, okay, you can use them. Okay. Um, in a street situation, I mean, you you have to decide in a street situation what what you're going to do. Well, you're not going to really decide. You're going to do it. Okay. Uh, it's really important that even though um, I've heard who, who was up here today or yesterday said, you know, you may have time to, to plan what you're going to do, you know, that's really in terms of legalities, that's really a bad thing to do because <clears throat> you want to be aware of your environment, but you want whatever you do to be instinct, okay, or a result of your training. Okay, uh, you don't want to plan ahead. Well, if he grabs me, I'm going to do A, B, C, and D, because that has happened on the street, and the person that ends up going to jail is the martial artist, because they, you know the, 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 the defendant gets a good attorney who then can say you anticipated the attack, and rather than choosing to avoid it, you planned how to defend yourself, and by doing so, you took the offensive, okay? This gets into another area, but really what you need to do is, even after you, you know, successfully defended yourself, uh, if you successfully defended yourself, you probably have no idea what you really did, because it's been instinct or result of training, okay? Mushin, okay? And, and if anyone asks you what you did, your best thing to say is, I don't know. I have to think about it. See me tomorrow. Okay. Yes, the police would like to get this thing straightened up and tied up right away. But you need to have time because you don't want to say, well, he choked at me, so I kicked him in the groin. And then he was standing like that, so I did a key turn, which broke his neck. And now he's a quadriplegic. I never used the Japanese term to describe. Yeah, never. Yeah, no, never use the Japanese term. They know exactly. Yeah, once you use a Japanese term, they know you are an expert martial artist and you are toast. Just, just say. I twisted his neck. Just, just say. If you have to. Just say. I, I just reacted. Right. I don't really you're, know you're, that's mean. why you need time to get away and, and think about what happened, and you may actually remember what you did. But you need to keep it in simple English. I, I reacted. I don't remember what I did. I, I think I twisted his neck. Uh, uh, and I don't remember yeah. how his foot got in my hand. I don't. Yeah, no. Yeah, because you may not really remember how his foot got in your hand. Okay. Um, because you got to cover yourself. It, it's part of you know. Part of it's the, the terminology will get you in trouble. Uh, in, in California now, for law enforcement, they don't. Need, it used to be in, in the court you could say pain compliance. Now it's down to the only word that's used is compliance. Okay, I used a compliance technique to get the suspect to become more compliant so that he would comply to my compliance request. <laughs> okay, you know because you use it's not a negative word yet. Okay, they haven't thought of another word we use for compliance. Uh, but you really have to be careful what you say. And you have you have to the same thing for a lot of the stuff in jujitsu. Okay, you know a lot of the stuff that you learn in jujitsu is designed to injure another person. And if you do it on the street, they're going to get hurt because they don't know how to fall. They don't know how to compensate for their technique or anything. Okay, and you have to recognize that as a martial artist. And, and you kind of have to accept yourself. That there's nothing, <coughs> there's there's no difference between doing a hand throw and snapping his wrist and sticking my finger up his nose and getting him down that way. All it is is a different technique. Yes, it may be a little less socially acceptable, but this person is being totally socially unacceptable because he attacked you. You have done nothing more immoral, you have done nothing wrong, you have done nothing dirty, you have done nothing inappropriate. This is the person who screwed up, okay? And he's the one that caused injury to himself, not you, okay? 
And I think I'd much rather have a stinger, stinger, finger stuck up my nose and have a hand throw, break my wrist, land on my shoulder, separate my shoulder and get a concussion out of it. You're being more considerate to him by sticking your finger up his nose. <laughs>